Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind the scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Larry Heaney to learn about his conservation work with mammals in island ecosystems. My research focuses on questions that have to do with the kinds of things that people associate with Charles Darwin and the Galapagos Islands. I'm interested in, in the factors that, um, that promote the evolution of biological diversity and that are associated with the long-term continuation of that biological diversity. So where does it all come from? Um, that's essentially the, the primary question. Most of my research I do in the Philippines in collaboration with people who live in the Philippines. Uh, from, the, from several of the universities, some conservation organizations, the Philippine National Museum, a um, variety of places. Most people think of most mammals as being large because we're large, but most mammals are small. Most mammals are either um, rodents of some kind and they're extremely diverse. Many of them don't look at all like what most people think of as rodents. Or they're bats or they're shrews. Um, so most of them are pretty small animals. So with the work in the Philippines, the whole idea is to develop a comprehensive understanding of the, the evolutionary origin and ecological maintenance of the diversity of mammals. What we're interested in doing is documenting um, the patterns of, of mammal diversity um, along a given mountain elevational gradient. So we start at the bottom of the mountain, we do intensive sampling there, then we move up uh, five or six hundred feet in elevation and do another l round of intensive sampling there and just continue on up to the top of the mountain often doing oh anywhere from uh, three to eight different sites along the mountain depending on how tall the mountain is. Um, at each one of these sites what we want to know is how many species of mammals occur there. Simple question, difficult to answer. We work in places where we find new species of mammals every year. And it's not unusual for us to work in places where half of the species and 90% of the individuals represent unknown species at the time that we start our work. And what we have found initially came as a great surprise. For the bats, we found that maximum diversity is in the lowlands. That's pretty much what people expect. What they tell you is maximum diversity occurs in tropical lowland rainforest. Okay, for bats, that's true. For the other mammals, it's not true. As you go up in elevation, there are progressively more and more and more species. So up high in the mountains in mossy forests, there will be four or five times as many species as occur in the lowlands. We provide the basic information on the animals. We provide recommendations as to what's needed to, to make sure that they continue to survive into the future. Other people then decide on the economic and political issues. That's beyond our capacity to deal with. But they can't make any decisions without having the basic information on the species. When I started working in the Philippines, the number of people who are working on these kinds of issues was pretty small particularly given the tremendous concentration of, of unique species and the concentration of threatened species in the Philippines. There was very little communication going on between the government, between people in academia who were doing a lot of the, uh, what, well, what research was being done. Fortunately, with a grant from the, uh, the MacArthur Foundation, I was able to bring together people from the government, universities, conservation organizations for a meeting in 1991 where we talked about the issues that needed to be dealt with in terms of basic research and the conservation work that needed to be done based on that research. The organization that, that resulted from that is called the Wildlife Conservation Society of the Philippines. When we had our first meeting in 1991, we found a total of 26 people who were sufficiently interested that we could reasonably invite them to a conference. We now have two to three hundred, or sometimes four hundred people who come to our conferences. Twenty years later, the organization is still going strong. 